competitive overview of and understanding FDA regulation governing good laboratory practice, good clinical practice, and good manufacturing practice. Over the years, I have seen a lot of, in many situations, where because of you know, lack of understanding or because of the current practice that we tend to misinterpret the applicable laws and regulation, I have found that a lot of non-compliance, a lot of deviation, and even a device manufacturer who has spent almost 10 years trying to implement and exercise good laboratory practice when they are not subject to. You know, think about following, implementing and maintaining documentation requirements for good laboratory practice when they are not subject to, you know, that's a lot of, that's a lot of waste, you know, for many years. So in this presentation, I'd like to lay out some information for us to improve our awareness so that we can apply applicable requirements. This is general disclaimer for your own review, but the entire content of this presentation are not intended to be all-inclusive. What I mean by that is, even though I have tried to put the best content together for today's presentation purposes, you may have, you may expect is something else that, you know, I, I addressed your presentation. If I have not covered your questions or, you know, whatever you wanted to hear, you may raise any question during Q&A session and I will be very happy to address any of your questions. Today we have various objectives, starting with, starting with laws and regulations, regulatory requirements for GLP and GCP and GMP practices, and FDA guidance, standard and enforcements, and I will recommend what is best practices and what we should do, what we should not do. The law that, that's applicable I think that we, you know, all of you may have heard many times Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act. For today's presentation purposes, I will refer to it as FFDCA, OFDCA, or the Act. Under the Act, there are 10 chapters, and I'm showing you Chapter 5. Under Chapter 5, there is a, you know, various part, but what you see, the sections under FDCA and also corresponding sections under Title 21 United States Code sections. For example, if we are looking at under FDCA Section 501, which correspond to Title 21 United States Code Section 351, adulterated drugs and devices. Well, over the years, they have been a lot of amendments made to the FDCA. For example, we, you know, that there is a recent law that was enacted in July 9, 2012, that is FDA Safety and Innovation Act, pro FDACIA. That was enacted July 9, 2012, that amended various sections of the FDCA. For example, FDCA Section 519, F. That was amended according to FDACIA. It is about unique device identification and also additional amendments. You know, for example, according to FDACIA section 1136, that amended FDCA section 745A e-copy requirements for medical device submission, for example. So now I'm talking about the statute and the requirements set out on the particular statute, we call them as statutory requirements. But they are also federal regulations. So federal regulations are to implement the statutory requirements. For example, the statutory requirements on the FDCA are implemented on the what we call FDA regulation, that is, Title 21, Code of Federal Regulations, CFR, Food and Drugs. In terms of, 
In terms of good manufacturing practice, for example, for medical devices, in pharma is known generally known as current good manufacturing practice, but in medical device industry, current good manufacturing practice, CGMP is a rather old term, and we now call them as quality system regulation, QSR, that is on the 21 CFR Part 820, that is equivalent to current good manufacturing practice.